Okay, so, so let's start. So hello everybody on our next Open Virtualization Pro webinar. Again, Jacek Skrzyński. Larry. Together with Pla Paweł Mączka. <laughs> yes. Uh, last time I was in you know, a problem with his surname. He, right now he has a problem with my name. So <laughs> let's say... <laughs> one, one. One, one. one. Uh, so today's subject you see is part three, getting started admin task automation with Ansible on Ovid Red Hat Virtualization. Uh, so the third time, Yes. Uh, I'm not saying that is the last time, yeah. but definitely we'll look forward for some new subjects. It's, it's, a, it's a huge subject, that's why we need to divide it into the three different parts. Exactly. Uh, last two times we have a really good discussion, uh, lots of comments, lots of people who, who've been engaged. You know how many people watched uh, the post-production webinar? Tell me, please. One. Oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> I, I, I think more than thousand. Uh, so we have a really good stats uh, on it. Uh, so Jacek, what we have for our guests today? Okay, so we gonna extend today a little bit our tandem, which is Red Hat Virtualization, Ovirt, uh, and Ansible. We will introduce uh, Red Hat platforms. Okay. So, so something new. The cloud points will yeah. will appear on this yes, webinar. Yes, good. Yes, yes. Go but on. for sure we're gonna use uh, exactly the same stack, meaning technology one from uh, from previous uh, meetings, mm -hmm. uh, the Red Hat virtualization, Ansible, together I will show you a little bit uh, Ansible Tower okay. uh, and embedded Ansible inside the platforms. It's gonna be, it's gonna be an additional thing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so looking forward to, yeah. to, 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 to watch this. So let's start with introducing ourselves, yes? Yes. So my name is Jacek Skorzyński and I'm a Red Hat Solution Architect uh, based in Warsaw. So my main focus, I would say, is uh, automation at Red Hat. Yes? So everything around Ansible, this is my topic. Uh, and of course, uh, Red Hat Virtualization because I'm a pure infrastructure guy. Yes? So, okay. So it needs to be there. Uh, so you're connecting the infrastructure with the automation. Yes, yes, exactly what I do uh, every day. Yes. What I'm about the bicycle? Bicycle, bicycle is my you know after work activity, I would say. Okay. <laughs> so riding bike uh, with uh, my kids, uh, with my wife. This is this is my pleasure. <laughs> and everybody on the on the same bike. <laughs> uh, not exactly, not exactly. <laughs> but close to each other. Okay. Okay. And also valuable. Yes. Yes. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Currently. Uh, watching more than playing, okay. but uh, you know we will see. Uh, I hope uh, it will it will change soon. Okay, good. So and you. So a few words about myself. I'm Pavel Monchka. I'm one of the co-founders of the Stowe company. Uh, I do a lot of uh, specialization in the backup and recovery area, and of course uh, the Red Hat virtualization and the Ovid. Uh, it's really close with our products. We given yes. the option to uh, uh, properly, uh, we doing the properly data protection for this kind of the platforms. We'll tell a few words about it later on. Mm -hmm. And I have also still um, my hobby is also the kids. Don't so no worries. There's not <laughs> not there, but also the mountains. <laughs> uh, but the guitar, we have our own band. Uh, we we saying it's uh, whatever metal. So if you would like to hear what we, you know, built and recorded lately, I, just give us, give I've us got a sign. challenge. I've got a challenge for you. Maybe okay. uh, one webinar you should come with the guitar and uh, uh, show is, us a few riffs. Maybe. This is the option. I need to speak <laughs> with the Martin operator is, is the option to a uh, doable. Martin, do, is, it, is it doable? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> okay, we'll try. Okay, let's go for it. Okay. Oh, sorry. So uh, what we just did uh, till now, we present you the, the Ovirt Red Hat Virtualization uh, uh, technology, mm -hmm. yes, which is, which is the open virtualization technology. Based on KVM, for those of you who wasn't with us uh, previously, uh, please uh, mm, take a look a little bit about uh, what is inside. Yes, so mm -hmm. we are uh, based on KVM. KVM is a heart for Red Hat virtualization for Ovirt. Yes, this is this is the, the the sweet spot I would say, and we of course have a, a, um, a tooling on top of it, which is the, the main tool for us 
to maintain the, the whole ecosystem is uh, a Red Hat Virtualization Manager, which mm -hmm. is also built on a Red Hat stack. Yes, there is no, um, no uh, nothing to hidden that uh, it's built on Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux, uh, all the way down up to the middleware uh, portfolio, the JBoss uh, AP, and then the application itself, okay. uh, which forms a uh, Red Hat Virtualization Manager. Then on top of it, we've got of also a web uh, browser admin portal, which gives us an ability, a possibility to manage our virtual platform. Uh, user portal, just a, a slightly smaller brother of mm -hmm. admin portal, just to, okay. just to give your, your users um, a way to operate with, to play with your VMs. And uh, of course, REST API, Python SDK, which we use for Ansible, highly used for Ansible. Yeah, so that's that's the that's the story around Red Hat virtualization, which you should be aware of. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and why Ansible? This is the this is the good question. We already talked a little <laughs> bit about that. Yes. Yeah, so we because we are lazy. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, what we said. We, we would like to get the things. You know. Yeah. We would like to get the things done easier yes, and yes. and the faster. Yes. That's that's correct. And this is a huge uh, big. Um, you know, smile when you're just starting something and it's doing, and this is gonna, this is this is done automatically. Yes, yeah? so you don't need to touch anything; it's done. It just no, does. No. This I, is, I've this seen is one of, on one of the presentation the, on last week uh, Red Hat forum, uh, Martin Stage with uh, the beginning of Paris. They installed yeah. all of the Subhana on the yes, power yes. with you know just, just one play. click. Yeah, just yeah. one click. Yeah, that's so. that's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. So we love it. Yes, I love it personally. <laughs> uh, but why Ansible? Ansible? I will not tell your wife, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, why Ansible? Ansible is agentless. So we don't need to uh, modify our endpoints at all. Yes, we connect to it with native APIs, native protocols like SSH, like REST API for uh, Red Hat virtualization. Mm -hmm. yes? So that's, that's how we do it. Then it's simple. Why it's simple? Because after even half uh, half a day, maybe few hours of uh, of working with Ansible without any knowledge about this technology, you're gonna be you you can name yourself an expert yes in this technology because it's really simple to start first playbook and to get a value from it yes mm -hmm. not just hello world but something which will work for sure yes so that's that's the beauty why powerful uh, because we have a huge community underneath yes this is a huge community of our of uh, independent developers of our companies which are our certified partners in this ansible ecosystem this is not only red hat in it there is much okay. much more in it yes? so you will find right now more than three uh, thousand modules for for ansible yes for different parts for platforms. will you show today the ansible inside the cloud forms yes okay yes, so I will. I will. This is a goal. Yeah, okay, a goal. good. Yeah. One of them. <laughs> okay, on. so what we can uh, can find in the overt space, as I said, it's uh, a huge number of modules, and here uh, in the overt space, we're gonna uh, we can find a lot of them. Yeah? So basically speaking, just to give you a brief idea what you can do with Ansible uh, on Overt, mm -hmm. uh, everything which you can click through the uh, admin portal, you can do with Ansible okay. automatically. So this is the, yes. the simple answer. What can I do? Everything which, which is visible yes. from the UI perspective. From REST API, basically speaking. Yes. Okay. So even if it's not there in the, in the um, UI perspective, uh, from the UI perspective, you can also do it uh, okay. with Ansible. Yes. So that's, that's the goal. And so we, uh, um, we are developing it constantly. Yes. So new things, are coming, new things are there. Already just a week ago, or even less than a week ago, we introduced Ansible Engine 2.9. So for each one of you who would like to just jump into the hottest one, uh, it's already there. You can you can download, you can you can install it, you can play with it. Yes, and uh, over modules are also there. Yes? Okay. So you don't need to think, search, whatever, you have everything you need inside Ansible itself. Okay, but I told you today that we're gonna uh, add to this tandem uh, CloudForms also. So what is that? Yes. What is the CloudForms? 
So Classrooms basically is the tool to manage our uh, underlining infrastructure. Right? So it's, uh, it's a virtualization, it's a private cloud, it's a, a public cloud. Uh, if we are talking about uh, AWS, uh, Azure, that's, that's what we can do with cloud forms. We can also uh, manage bare metals if we want. Mm -hmm. yeah, with uh, um, Lenovo X Clarity and also with Redfish provider, which is uh, which is right now at tech preview, but it's coming uh, in uh, in a new release. I I don't think we just released uh, version five of Cloud Forms. I need to check if it's okay. already uh, fully supported. Don't didn't do that yet. But the key point is that I see from the virtualization perspective, you can go beyond the Red Hat virtualization and Ovid. Yes. Yes. You can go on the different. Uh, virtualizations such as VMware and the Microsoft Hyper-V. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it's, yeah, it's important yeah, to, yeah. to think as a, to, to, to get the cloud forms as a one management. One for place, all of yes, the, yeah, one, one umbrella place. over your uh, different uh, providers. Yes. But today we're gonna, uh, we're gonna concentrate on Red Hat virtualization uh, yeah, and show you different things which you can do with uh, cloud forms together with Ansible and Red Hat virtualization on, on it. Okay. Yes. So, so that's the goal. What you will find out here also, it's, it's not only just you know, the, another management tool to, to click through some different GUIs. Uh, you will get here also a policy and compliance module, which can be also implemented, which is by default included in the product. Uh, the operational and visibility, all the things uh, regarding your virtual private cloud platforms are already there in the cloud forms the service automation so we will today prepare a service template and present it to the uh, to the self-service portal i will show you later on how to how to do it easily and quickly with uh, with um, red hat cloud forms yes and many many more so that's that's really really huge thing i th i believe so so how we put together all of this yes so Mm, cloud forms is basically delivered as a, a virtual appliance and uh, if you would like to add uh, install cloud forms is just downloading the proper appliance for your proper um, um, provider meaning if you would like to uh, install it on a ref you've got special uh, special um, image for mm -hmm. for it okay. yes so that that's basically it and your installation lasts like Five minutes maybe including download yes if you have a good uh, good connection then you will get a web-based um, admin portal uh, also self-service portal for your end customers for your users yes, just to consume what you prepared on top of cloud forms um, of course the multi-tenancy is there yes, so you can also uh, introduce it into the product uh, if you would like to cut your infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, through the multi different multi different uh, organizations and and to use it consume it like a kind of private cloud infrastructure yes so that's that's uh, that's something you can do also and this one this pluggable api framework meaning that everything what we do with cloud forms is do, is done via api call yes. so mm -hmm. again like Ansible. We don't need to modify our uh, Red Hat virtualization or uh, OpenStack. We don't need it. Need to, to to do that. We just can. Uh, we 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 do it with native API calls for the uh, for the platform itself. And the same the other way around. If we would like to call cloud forms, so not using the uh, GUI. Uh, uh, console, we mm -hmm. can also call so the same with, approach, yeah, everything with, uh, with the API. API. Okay, yeah. Uh, horizontal scaling. Uh, so, if we want more, if we want to scale, we are just adding new appliances. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, another appliance can hold another role, yes, or can hold multiple roles of it. It can be a database, it can but be from a the starting point, it's good to have first one, but yeah, we don't need to multiple. More, most yeah. of the time, we start with one. Uh, actually, we should start with um, maybe two, okay. just, just as the basics. So one will be uh, our database appliance and the other will be the rest. Okay. Yes, I would okay. Say. 
So then it will be much easier to scale, yes, because then uh, we can introduce another appliance for the database and make it highly available than another appliance or set of appliances for another roles, yes, like a web-based portal, like uh, workers and so on and so forth. And the last one, which I would like to mention today is role-based access uh, and tagging. So, so uh, you can also, uh, assign certain groups, certain users to, 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 to roles uh, where they will find out or they will be able to um, start only or manipulate only the set of infrastructure which you will allow them to do that. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's very good. But also with tagging system, you can tag, uh, you can uh, apply specific tags and based on tags say, okay, this user can only see machines which are tagged Okay, so tag X easy representation yes. of the user access control. Control, yes. 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 Okay, exactly. Um, this is the service self service portal. So I will try to show you today uh, as try because we've got a live demo and with live demo everything is possible. Okay, so go <laughs> go, go go for it. Ho hope we will. So we can we'll skip it, it. If, yeah. if we can destroy your demo. So <laughs> let's look. I forward. hope it will work uh, just just from from the from the beginning to the end without any any problems. But uh, this portal is dedicated for consumers, users, mm -hmm. internal, external doesn't matter. Just having the portfolio of services, uh, they can click through it, they can uh, click through the dialogue which we can attach to this service and then they can parameterize somehow their uh, services and uh, order them like uh, okay, in, so, in the internet so, shop. So the, so the major change is that you're not looking as a specific VMs, you're looking as a VM as a kind of the service. Yes, yes. yes, uh, yes. So you can put multiple VMs, multiple different applications yes. into one service. Into one and you, can, you are building the catalog of yeah. the services. Okay. Even more, using Ansible, you can also uh, introduce here a um, configuration as a service. So okay. you don't need to start a VM instance, new thing. You can also uh, configure something which is already there, yes, which, is, which already exists on, on, your, on your platform. Uh, all right. So I told you about Ansible and Ansible is also a part of cloud forms yeah, so it can act uh, in a both way i would say it can act as a embedded ansible inside red hat cloud forms but it can it can also act as a ansible tower which can connect together with uh, with red hat cloud forms so i will show you both integrations today how to configure it how to start uh, working with them uh, but then we will use today only the embedded one uh, just for the demonstration. Okay. So one more and this is your time. This is my time. Yeah, this is your slide. Oh gosh, can you go on mute? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let me just... Uh, uh, where do I have... Sorry. Ah, I'll unmute yeah, you. Okay. okay, good. So. This is the exact. This is the example. Or just give us a sec. We have some issues. So, vProtect is one of the example how we can integrate um, and build the backup as a service approach with the cloud forms. So, when you said about the easily API approach, how to connect it. So then I started to smiling because this is what we what we did uh, with the cloud forms in integration. So we have our RESTful API, so we can manage everything and we can fully hidden the backup and expose it into the different third-party portals. So here we see the representation that if you have a VMs or you build in your own catalog, so you don't need to also ask the different administrators, different departments for doing a backup, but we can build the self-service self self -service, uh, self -service, um, approach. And you can see that we already provided the option, the individual new, let's say, menus. Yes. Oh, oh, thank you. So you can back up, you can restore, you can schedule. Actually, you can do everything what we build on top of the cloud forms. So this is just a, of the example. Extension of the... Yeah, uh, extension of the options. Of the so options. Uh, the menu. this is a brilliant scenario that the backup is the one of the area, of course, that we are working on. 
but I just wanted to keep keep you in mind that if you will think about the Ovid Red Hat or the other virtualization engine, and you will looking for the backup as a service approach and self service approach, the vProtect is a, one of the platforms that you can you, you can go with. Uh, what is important is that um, if we build on top of the cloud from this feature, uh, like additional parameters and additional buttons we don't need to work on the multi-tenants. We don't need to actually have this, this kind of the capabilities in the backup platforms. Mm -hmm. The cloud forms giving us the yeah. whole range of the different options uh, built on, uh, on top of this engine. Okay, so let's, let's go for the demo file. Yeah. This is what, okay. I'm, what I'm waiting <laughs> for right now okay. to, so to destroy something. Uh, let me just unmute. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so, uh, back again, and uh, what I would like to show you today is the, um, first of all, I would like to introduce you to Cloudform. So, I would like to show you how to integrate uh, one of our providers, which is uh, Red Hat Virtualization for today, with Cloudform. So, so we're going to do some quick overview what we can okay. do from out of the box, I would say, and how the integration is really simple, because it's really simple, just two clicks and nothing else to do. Then I would like to also show you how to integrate Red Hat uh, uh, cloud forms with Ansible. Yeah? So we've got, I, as I spoke previously, uh, we've got two options using embedded Ansible. I will show you how to turn it on and also use, use um, Ansible Tower. Uh, I will show you the integration part where, where we can find it. Then uh, next uh, thing, we, we will create a simple service template uh, just to demonstrate to you how straightforward it is uh, and how we, can, uh, how we can play with it, um, attaching some, some dialogue and uh, put it into the right uh, service catalog just for, you, just, just for users to see it, yes, to, to be able to consume it. So okay. that, that, that's the idea. And the last one, uh, I hope we'll have enough time uh, to proceed, is uh, the um, uh, another piece, Cloudforms, Rev, and Ansible uh, together, many custom buttons. And so what Pavel just uh, said, I will show you how to mm -hmm. make it work with uh, with embedded Ansible on top of uh, on top of one of the VM, yes, or or the the VM view, I would say. Okay, so let's get started. I will stop presenting for now and let me just connect to my demo environment. Hope it's still working as it is live. Yeah, just for your information, it's, it's not recorded demo, so everything can, can happen right yes, now. Yes, yes, yes. I hope we, it, will, it will be smooth. <laughs> <laughs> like always. Uh, so you're going into the Red Hat virtualization you started with, yeah? Yes, so just, just to let you know how, how we're gonna proceed. This is my Red Hat virtualization environment. Then uh, I also would like to also show you the dashboard of uh, Red Hat CloudForms. Then I also prepared some uh, example, uh, actually the playbook which we're gonna use. It, you can see it's just nine lines of, of code, of playbook code, I would say, uh, which is really simple one, but it's, quite powerful, I believe so. Still, even with nine lines, uh, we can squeeze it to, to eight if we want. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nine, nine, is, nine, nine is, is good. good. And then does, and then um, um, Ansible Tower, which mm -hmm. I also have prepared, also prepared for, for, for today. But to be honest, we don't need it for the demo. I just want to show you that so we will be able to sync in with, with it uh, using CloudFonts. Okay, so, Having cloud forms, uh, we are able to uh, uh, to see our dashboard, and this dashboard which you see here is just uh, I mean this is just my composition. Yes? You can uh, you can tune it uh, uh, to to your needs. You can even introduce different dashboards for different users, different group of users, whatever you want. It's here. Yep. So. Let's, let's get started. Let's start from the infrastructure part and our providers. So uh, what I've got in here is, the, is the, these are two providers. This is Red Hat Virtualization and VMware vCenter. 
let's concentrate on Red Hat virtualization for now. So uh, what I've got here is the information about, uh, set of information about my, uh, my Red Hat virtualization pro provider, where I've got my clusters, my hosts, my data stores, uh, mm -hmm. virtual machines and so on. So uh, what we should do to add a new provider, meaning like Red Hat virtualization, it's really simple. Uh, if we go to the infrastructure to providers, uh, there is a tab for configuration add a new provider. Okay, so what we need here is a name, let's name it test. I don't, I will not create it at mm -hmm. all, just to demonstrate to you. Uh, choose whatever we want from these uh, different uh, options, like uh, also uh, OpenStack platform director itself is, is okay. in, this, uh, in this menu also. Uh, then we need to provide our Red Hat Virtualization Manager uh, IP or, or host name, uh, port if we change that, username, password on which we would like to authenticate okay. with. Okay, yes. so authentication and I see the validation button. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. That's it. Then, if we would like to also gather some info, some um, metrics from uh, from Red Hat virtualization, there is also a way to do that. Uh, for your information, there is a detailed uh, detailed um, guide for that. Mm -hmm. The only thing, from the perspective of uh, Red Hat virtualization manager, we need to do we need to. Uh, inject a user into the data warehouse database which collects our historical data and that's basically it yes the rest is done uh, natively yes? so we don't need to uh, to add any modification in this into it let me show you how it looks like on my ref which is already created so uh, that's basically it yes I, I use a default admin uh -huh. uh, with uh, um, connection to the engine history database for uh, user CF me and and that's it that's that's what I do that's that's everything what you need actually then there is a need for a time for cloud funds to work yes because this is a, a tool which is uh, designed to work constantly inside your environment it needs to gather some information. It needs to gather some data to be able to present it to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's that's uh, that's the thing which you should be aware of. But the good thing, it's not a greenfield tool. Okay. So uh, if you already have your infra working, you just need to. I mean, you don't need to create everything from scratch. You just need to. Uh, add it to your already working infrastructure and uh, CloudFonts will gather all the information. So, so this is a this is very good, uh, good thing. If you would like to continue working with CloudFonts, go ahead. If you don't want to, just stop CloudFonts and your infra will remain the same okay. in the same state. All right, so that's, that was basic overview of what we can do here. This is that uh, there, there is much, much more around this uh, providers, clusters, virtual machines, which we can also show you here uh, around uh, Red Hat virtualization and uh, to just uh, filter uh, out some machines. We've got like a rail machine, which is working currently here. Mm -hmm. on, on, on so my basically you can go see all of the imported, let's say machines and you can, based on filters, you can grab and yep. put into the Only. catalog or yep. do, you do, can, you can do some magic. Yes. You can do, you can compose your own filters if you want. Mm -hmm. It's based on tags or whatever you want. You've got here, I just uh, just uh, uh, used a uh, pre-configured one. Okay, go uh, on. Okay, let's, uh, let's see now what we can do from the Ansible perspective. Yes? So here we've got a very interesting tab, which is automation one. Uh, and uh, inside platforms, as I said, we got uh, embedded Ansible, uh, which is embedded into the product. And we've got also a way to uh, put it together to integrate it with uh, Ansible Tower. Okay. So let me show you uh, the embedded Ansible option. So if I'm going to go to configuration uh, section, uh, I would see 
uh, the server control roles, actually server roles. Yeah? So here as my demo environment is just a one single CloudForms appliance. So I've got all in one installation, basically speaking. Uh, I've got almost all of my roles running here. So uh, I've got my embedded Ansible uh, here uh, working on my uh, CloudForms appliance, as you can see. And this is what we need to do at the very beginning if we would like to uh, r um, uh, run our embedded Ansible, because by default it's not turned on. Okay, okay. So it's we need to thing. do it. Uh, we need to wait a little bit for it to, to be active, but then uh, we need uh, another thing. Yes? So here in, the, uh, in this menu, you will find out that there are two uh, submenus, like credentials. Let's, let's explore it a little bit. So what are the credentials? Credentials here are just uh, to, for, for us to be consumed, meaning to uh, connect to, with uh, specific credentials to my Git repo, if mm -hmm. it needs some credentials. Uh, to my machine if I would like to log into it and do some magic, some automation on top of it. This is what I need, uh, for example, in here or in here. This is a ma my machine root credential for, uh, for, for this case. Uh, then also I've got my Red Hat Virtualization Ansible credentials, which allows me to connect to the platform itself with Ansible and do some automation okay. on top of it. Yes, so that's 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 what we I... We have a GitHub, we have connected to a specific VM yeah. and we are connected to yes. the Red Hat virtualization. Yes, that's, that's what we need. From perspective of, from the perspective of embedded Ansible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is what, what uh, we got right now. And then we need our playbooks. So that's why we uh, need to create a repositories for that. And we've got some. Uh, today we're going to use this one, uh, my initials and uh, CloudForms playbooks. Uh, and we're going to use actually that one for the uh, custom button, but I will, uh, mm -hmm. I will introduce it to, uh, it to you uh, later on. Um, and here we can find our playbook. So uh, in this repo, I will find out that there are, uh, there are some, uh, some settings, for example, uh, what is the uh, source control management type, what is the URL branch and so on and so forth. Yeah, so the standard way to work with Git, this is, this mm -hmm. is what we can find here. Uh, another thing, the last one, uh, these are our playbooks. So when we synchronize our repositories, we will find all our playbooks in here from different, different repos inside as you can see, embedded Ansible. Mm -hmm, yes, so mm -hmm. this, is, this is what we need. Then there so, is... So the mm -hmm. credentials, repositories and the playbooks. Yes, mm -hmm. inside repositories. Then there is a place for our uh, Ansible tower. So the second option, if we don't want to utilize our embedded Ansible, because you need to know that this is just... Uh, um, I mean, embedded Ansible can see what CloudForms can see. Yes. Okay. So CloudForms unfortunately cannot see everything <laughs> yes uh, and uh, but Ansible Tower can see everything what is around Ansible world I mean what, mm -hmm. what Ansible itself can touch so having CloudForms is much much broader yes? if we would like to go into um, networking part like um, uh, physical switches or and so on uh, we will not see them inside CloudForms because CloudForms doesn't have a capabilities to touch physical switches and to see the inventory of them. Mm -hmm. Tower can see them, can uh, produce an inventory and uh, be able to touch them. Yes? So in, if we would like to run a um, playbook against, let's say, Cisco switch, we can do it easily with CloudForms, with uh, Tower. Tower, okay. Yeah. okay. So let's explore, let's see what we've got here. We've got a uh, one uh, provider, which is my one Ansible tower, uh, which is in here. We can see all of my templates, all of my, which are in here. We can see all of my credentials, projects, inventories, and so on and so forth. Yes, so that's, that's what we see actually right now in the CloudForms UI. Uh, 
my inventory, yes, which is in sync with what we what we saw uh, on our um, previously. Then configured system, then my job templates. So here I've got all my job templates ready to use in Ansible Tower. And having that integration is much easier for us to consume because if we already have something prepared on Tower, it is based on our credentials, of course. Mm -hmm. It is visible for cloud forms and it can be all just consumed. We okay. don't need to introduce any modifications into it and so on. So, so just it will be fully transparent. All yes. of the things that we've done in the tower. Yes. We it's can just consume. basically a RESTful API okay. call to tower uh, to, uh, to just inform tower. OK, right now, dear tower, please start my uh, start my playbook. And that's it. So that this is pretty simple. Nothing really is to be scared about. Uh, if you would like to configure a new tower provider, this is what we need to provide. This URL, name, uh, username, password, that's it. That's, that's, that's what we need. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the service tab and let's uh, maybe uh, create a service for us. So let me uh, start the another window uh, for cloud forms. Which will allow us to log into um, self-service portal, mm -hmm. yeah, which is different portal than this one we, we just saw. Uh, let me let me show you. Yeah, I've got my dashboard, I've got my catalogs. So here after some, I hope soon we should see our uh, uh, service catalog, uh, which is, yeah, it's, oh, it was already there. Sorry for that. Let me jump back. So you can see my port portfolio of services. Yes, there is uh, uh, app server or right, Red Hat virtualization. There is an app stack, which means uh, this can be a multiple different uh, servers spread even across different providers. Mm -hmm. And then there is my um, cloud forms and tower bundle, which uh, is a combination of uh, cloud forms automation and tower automation in one service then database, then different, different, uh, different tasks. Yeah. So let me, uh, let me show you how to create another one uh, for mm -hmm. us for today. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do, what we need, we need to uh, go into the service catalogs where we have a few catalogs, Red Hat demo and some other demo. Uh, and in the catalog items, there is a there is a place to create my catalog item, which is just a one thing to do, meaning that just one block, and we can rely on this block as an entire service, or we can compose a set of blocks together, put put them together, and uh, um, um, introduce it to our customers, our users as a service bundle. Okay. So the, just a combination, so you, you, you combination of different, combination. Yeah, of different, different pieces together. Okay, so uh, let's add a new catalog item, and uh, let's choose it from our uh, already uh, running providers. Mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, today we will rely on Red Hat virtualization, uh, and then. Um, I will name it like it. This, this is gonna be our service. I would like to display it into the catalog. Mm -hmm. uh, then I would like to add it to the Red Hat demo catalog. Uh, and then I would like to also uh, introduce, I mean, connect this service with the uh, simple uh, dialogue. What is the dialogue? Let me explain later on, but let's say I will uh, I will find some um, VM provisioning dialogue. I, I believe this. That's. I like be, the VM T-shirt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we'll not use it. <laughs> we'll not use it today. Uh, then details. 
you can put here some HTML formatted or just text formatted description of what uh -huh. it's all about. Uh, let's let's skip it and then request info. So here I'm able to uh, choose what kind of template I would like to use for okay, that. Okay, so yes. the number so of the RAM, number of the VCPs, exactly, so exactly. So. What you can see here, uh, those templates are already here on the platform. Okay, yes. so, so this so is just a copy of the mm -hmm, templates mm -hmm. you will see uh, directly from Red Hat uh, Red Hat Virtualization Manager. So let me let me choose this one. Then I will uh, use a native clone as I'm gonna, this is the, the, the fastest one. Uh, I have also an options for e ISO or PC uh, installation option. Uh, for now, let's uh, stick to the native clone and uh, just a VM name, which will be um, mm, overwritten. Yes, so here I need to provide something some name if if i'm not gonna in, uh, uh, override it uh, i will uh, i will get this one with uh -huh. some iteration on uh, at the at the very end yes okay. so zero zero one zero zero two and 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 so on if if it's uh, if it's the case uh, then with environment what i've got here i've got all my data centers as i'm just have one this is the the, the list micro lab yeah yeah uh, micro cluster the only one cluster then I can specify on which host I would like to run my machine uh -huh. uh, and in which, uh, in which data store. Yes. That's, that's what I can do, but I can also choose automatically. If I choose automatically, then CloudFront will decide. Uh -huh. Okay, on this, provi on this provider, I've got uh, this, the smallest number or smallest form footprint for, for the VMs is on host, let's say, node 3. Uh, and I will put it also on the data store, which is which is uh, which is, has the the the, the biggest uh, free space for it. Okay. So let's have it. Let's uh, um, yeah, we can choose the hardware if we want. We can choose the networks, and the, here I've got all my networks from mm -hmm. my provider okay, again. Uh, and here the customizations. This is really good thing about customizing our VMs on top of Ref. Uh, we can use, for example, um, Cloudinit if mm -hmm. we want to. Um, uh, we have also a possibility to use SysPrep if we are talking about Windows machines and so on. Yeah? So for today, we're not gonna use anything, just to speed up. But yeah, just the information that we can fully customize the, yes. and the template, yes, yes. here. Okay. Exactly, uh, adding um, static IP address, adding some uh, packages even mm -hmm. during the uh, VM creation is uh, possible. Uh, now, then with scheduled, we're gonna start our machine. The lifespan of this machine will be infinite, but we can also specify at mm -hmm. the very beginning how long does this machine gonna last by default of uh, course what, what, what about the decommission so what about the one month for example it will shut down and delete it or it will yeah, inform it, your uh, the user who just uh, start this machine mm -hmm. after as i remember correctly it's uh, two weeks time before it's before gonna it, be it's gonna be deleted uh, he or she will get an uh, notification. A, a notification okay. yes and then can be uh, can be extended or can be just uh, uh, you know, wait for, for the shutdown and then it will be deleted by default. Yeah, so th this is the default behavior. Okay, so we've got this. Let's, uh, let's uh, see, I hope it's gonna create one. Yep, and in the Red Hat demo, we've got our um, stalwart demo. Yeah. So if we're going to, uh, let's say, refresh this one we should see our UI with our store demo mm -hmm. here yeah so this is what we can do and let me check what kind of dialogue I just clicked it of, co of course wrong one uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but this is a good uh, a good time to show you the dialogues where we okay. create dialogues just just a brief briefly going into automation automate and customization and here we've got a um, service dialog tab where we can find the uh, 
different dialogues. Yes, so we here have some some dialogues, some some place to just ask our user for input. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so simple service dialog will be just enough for us. So let me change it uh, very very qu quick, uh, and uh, then we will be able to run it. I in uh, where I have it. We need to be in a hurry because we have already ten minutes left. Okay, okay. Well, let, let's let's try to cope with it. Okay, okay. Let me let me just speed up a little bit. Um, and this one should be simple VM service dialog. Okay, so you're changing the dialog. So the dialog is actually the custom when you're creating some customization. Yes. So this is what will be visible from the catalog perspective. Yeah, this is the custom work. Okay. okay. Uh, so you do it by yourself. Uh, you can also modify what is already there. Uh, because there, there is with Cloudforms it uh, is shipped with some uh, already prepared dialogues. Uh, and if we're gonna go into it, into our uh, simple, it's just, you know, as a drop down area. And so you are putting here, adding some and uh, some other stuff to it, uh, add some, um, let's say, um, labels, options for, for different behavior name, it's gonna be my uh, variable name in this case yeah? so that's 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 how we uh, compose it okay let's let's cancel it let's not not modify it uh, but it's really straightforward and you can modify you can do it whatever you want basically speaking it's a very powerful one because even uh, it's not just a simple uh, ans uh, ask question and and uh, uh, wait for the answer but you can also uh, introduce here a dynamic style of dialogue so based on okay. first uh, answer you can fill in let's say five different fields uh, in, into it yeah? so so that's uh, that's pretty for powerful one so let me just jump into the uh, service catalog once uh, once again uh, let's add it let's name it uh, test vm001 uh, let's leave it with the defaults and add to the shopping cart and here in the shopping cart, you will we'll see ask for my credentials uh, and uh, yeah, credit, you know, card. credit card yeah, yeah. number. Yeah, I, I will introduce <laughs> you uh, in the next. But level. it's also possible. Yeah, it's, it's also, also possible, possible to have a purchase yeah. because uh, I didn't mention that uh, uh, Cloudforms also have the um, chargeback option. Mm -hmm. So you will be a you will be able also to track the number of zlotis or dollars or euro, euro whatever uh, how your infrastructure is used and based on that uh, proceed yeah so let's order that yes and here with ordering because i introduce also so right now let's let's imagine i'm one of the users so, so we have a private cloud approach yep. i'm one of uh, one of the division i would like to provision some new vms yep so i don't need to go to the admin i just go into the cloud forms portal based on my credential i see the list of the catalog so i can order one of the machines and all of the chargeback information credential provisioning will, will, be, be, will be there okay yeah. okay so what what i did i just uh, create um, uh, a, a provisioning service request mm -hmm. and uh, i just come back to the admin portal go to the services requests and i'm here in my request uh, details Mm -hmm. So uh, I also configured my CloudFonts to be uh, pretty strict, meaning that every single service uh, I need to add approval for that. Yeah? So th there is approval uh, okay. workflow added to it. So I'm an admin user and every time anyone will uh, ask uh, CloudFonts for some service, I will get an approval approval request yes and this is the request so i can say okay let's go the reason i don't like it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> submit and then machine starts yes so it will uh, provision another uh, machine called uh, in our case uh, the uh, uh, test VM mm -hmm. 001 on our Red Hat virtualization, it will take some time, yes, because this workflow has a lot of different options we can customize it. So uh, we will not use even one tenth of it, but it's it's there. So <laughs> it will it will check it uh, through the process. 
but when it's starting I think we it's a it's a good time to to show you the custom button options uh, based on the uh, compute and infrastructure so what I did I extend my menu inside Red Hat Cloud Forms uh, and I extend it for the virtual machine view yeah, so we've got filtered out our Red Hat uh, simple machine, which is gonna, uh, uh, which is our example today. And what I did, this is, this is something what you do, what you get by default, yes? This, mm -hmm. this part of the menu, like configuration, like changing the, uh, for example, configuration of the machine, like adding uh, VM memory, adding CPUs and so on, if, if the provider uh, allows you for, for that. Uh, then you can also check if your machine is compliant with your rules, which I also have uh, some compliance policy, but we don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. uh, then life cycle, if I would like to retire this VM, go ahead, I can do it. If I would like to migrate it for between hosts, I can also do it. Um, if I would like to see some monitoring data, some uh, timelines or chargeback preview for this particular VM, I can do it. Yes, then also access to the console and powering stuff. Let's 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 leave it. Yeah, let's let's go ahead. So what I'm gonna concentrate on the, this button menu. Okay. So I've got a bunch of different testing stuff, but I've got also here a menu for package install and uninstall option. So simple thing. Let's go back to the service. Let's go to the service catalog. And here I've got uh, in the item, in the service, in the uh, Red Hat demo mm -hmm. um, one, install I've package. got install mm -hmm. package on rel. And here I'm going to consume uh, embedded Ansible, just item type is just Ansible okay. playbook. So you're using actually the playbook. Yes, embedded. using uh, actually the playbook which is stored on the GitLab. Okay. Yes. Uh, from this repository, this is the playbook. This is the one which is mm -hmm. in you, here. You showed yeah. before. I use the machine root credentials, which is maybe not the very uh, very good for, way. For the demo purposes. Yeah, for for the do. demo purposes, it, it's, it's gonna run for sure. Uh, then I can uh, attach the verbosity and, and so on and so forth. Yes, so uh, even privilege escalation, if I'm gonna use another user, like like just, just, uh, just uh, a regular user, yes, I can also introduce it. And I also introduce a dialogue, but this uh, item is not going to be presented in the catalog, uh, meaning like self-service. Yes, I will not see it. I didn't see it. So uh, this service is reserved in my case, because I want to be like that, is reserved just for the button. Okay. So here is the playbook and you will see that we're going to use just one module with a name and state and basically that's it. And we will uh, add this name and state during our uh, provisioning process. Uh, one more thing here with automate and customization, there is a place called buttons. So here based on different, let's say types of uh, environment or a place where we where we can which we can find in in the cloud forms there are different ways to put different uh, different buttons so for example i would like to install something on machine on, only on vms and instances it doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't have any sense to have such a thing to be installed on um, provider itself yeah because we don't want to to be there we can also specify how it should behave. So maybe it should be visible only when the machine is on, not off. Because what is the, I mean, it doesn't make sense to have a, a button to be, to install something on the machine, which is just powered off. <laughs> yes, that, that doesn't okay. make sense. And the same for the OS type and so on and so forth. Yes, so that's, that's a lot of huge, uh, huge things, uh, number of things you can introduce uh, into it. Okay, let's let's go back to it. Yeah, I Pretty need to be a, you know time. I need to time pressure you. Okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, just to show you how it works, and then there will be a time for sum up. Okay? So uh, what I'm gonna do on my rel VM, which I just showed you, I will click and then should 
see some dialog, yes? And this is my dialog. Let's uh, say I would like to install my HTTPD mm -hmm. uh, package. This is the name of the package. I can also form a list if mm -hmm. I would like to, but it's not my case. And I would like to install. So the state okay. in here would be HTTPD and install. Mm -hmm. uh, actually present in, in Ansible, yeah? to be 100% to be specific. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's submit. Um, yep, so I introduce the uh, approval flow, so this needs so also some need approval. To, yeah, so it's a yeah. request ID. So Basic, uh, uh, just, just uh, yeah, just uh, uh, in the normal way, you probably will not have that. You will, you will make it uh, somehow, uh, filter it somehow on the role-based access scenario. So uh, this, is, this is what I did just to demonstrate to you that it's also possible to make it work uh, in this way. Uh, okay, go. Uh, this is the reason why you should uh, go. And here we will find this, is, this, this will do something in the background um, in my infrastructure, in my virtual machines. Uh, I will find out that, yeah, I, I didn't connect to my machine. So let me let me connect to it. Uh, SSH is uh, is the one six two. Um, it will be pretty fast. Yeah? So let me check if I already have this uh, uh, this uh, Red Hat uh, this uh, HTTPD package installed. Should be already there because Ansible is pretty fast and this playbook wasn't huge one. Yeah? So it should should work. Uh, QA, HTTPD, it's there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as you can see, uh, we can do also some uh, some zoom in, just to just to be able to see. We just installed the HTTPD package with uh, with our custom button. Yes, it it as it is Ansible underneath. It can be literally everything this okay. little button can so be the goal a huge a huge thing to to be introduced so if you would like to you know be mm, as crazy as possible so we could you know automate everything yeah. from the ui yeah. perspective yeah. so yeah. never yeah. use even the cli of course yes. it's it won't happen yeah <laughs> but but let's let's imagine that way okay yeah. so that was ex, ex, actually actually uh, something what i was about to show you today uh, in the in the really short uh, compact uh, way. I uh, I hope. So imagine we I have, hope we I are made after it. after <laughs> one hour, and it's a really compact way. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, it's it's a topic for the part four. But we promise that we'll finish on the three. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, if you will have any further questions, just uh, just com comment our uh, demo, our recording, or contact us privately. Uh, via the social media or um, write email to the info open virtualization pro um, today we've been talking about the, we finalized the trilogy yeah. of the yeah. uh, yeah. Our automation admin automation for the red hat virtualization of it introducing the cloud forms as a major uh, platform, engine yeah. platform to orchestrate all of the things that we would like to, to make our life consumable, a, basically consumable, consumable. Yeah. In, in an easy, easy GUI way I, I, style. So Jacek, that, it was a pleasure to have this trilogy with you. Yeah. We didn't, we don't, don't, we didn't finish. We just finalized the three yeah. parts. Looking forward for the next webinars. So uh, if you will have any question, don't hesitate to contact us. Jacek. Thank, Thank you, you very much, friend. Pavel. Uh, anything else from your side? I'm good. I, I think that was a, a, a huge uh, amount of knowledge yeah, uh, yeah. in a very <laughs> compact way, I would say. Yeah. Beauty. So that's, that's, uh, uh, that's something which you, of course, need to de develop, uh, each of you uh, by yourself, uh, tuned to your needs. But uh, I hope we showed you how to start. Yes? Mm -hmm. And that was our goal. That was our goal and, and I think we, we made it. So thank you for your time, for your webinar. Uh, 